Now let's talk more about this uh, thing called a rate determining step in a reaction mechanism. It is a step in a reaction mechanism that is much slower than all other steps and dominates the rate of reaction. So in our analogy, let's imagine that you're going uh, 100 miles. So uh, let's suppose we're in New York City and we want to go to Philadelphia. That's probably about 100 miles. And uh, so in the first 50 miles, let's see, so we're going to take two types of transportation. For the first 50 miles, we're going to walk. And for the second 50 miles, we're going to take a rocket. And here's my picture of a rocket. So it's going to be, I've uh, been drawing these since. Probably I was uh, a small child. And the first step, that's for, uh, there we go. There's me walking, and we're going to take a rocket for the second step. And when we walk, I don't know, let's just assume a medium to relatively good brisk pace. We're going to walk four. MPH, which is miles per hour, and in a rocket, assuming we can get into our rocket immediately, no time loss, we're going to be flying with the escape, the minimum escape velocity of a rocket, and that is 17,640 miles per hour. And so uh, in step, in this rocket, we're going much faster. What we can imagine is that if we were to walk uh, 50 hours, that, or sorry, 50 miles, that walking four miles per hour would uh, time, would take 12.5 hours. And then uh, we, when we walk the uh, other 50, or we take the rocket for the other 50 miles, uh, it would then take 0 0.0023 hours. So much faster, the time would be much shorter because our rate is much higher. That's something we've talked about before. And then if we were to look at the average rate of speed, we would be going 100 miles. And it would add up the times for these. So it would be 12.50283 hours, which is 7.998 uh, miles per hour. What? Oh. Right. Because we're going twice as far and uh, which is very much closer to the four miles per hour. Different, it's true, but it's much different than the rocket power. And so what we could say is that uh, the slow step defines the rate of reaction. Slow step defines the rate of reaction, which is not a perfect analogy because, yes, they're a little bit different, but uh, they're not that different compared to the rate of the second step. So this is an approximation, true, and it tends to be a good approximation. Um, and we could say that this is the same order of magnitude as the walking part. as only walking. And by order of magnitude, I mean it has the same power of 10. So four and eight, yes, they are different. In fact, it's doubled, but they're approximately the same. And I have to move this to make sure you can see it. There we go. Um, good. 
that's what we mean by rate determining step and how we are going to be using this rate determining step to uh, hypothesize reaction mechanisms. Now back to chemistry. So, uh, and this is the example we worked before. Remember we proposed a two-step reaction mechanism. And now my reaction, there we go. Um, and what we said was that we're gonna put slow here and fast here. This is K1, K2, K1, K2. And remember from that previous example, we said that the slow step is the step that is the rate law for the mechanism. And um, the slow step is the rate law for the mechanism. And so the two things that we need, remember, is that the rate law for the mechanism has to match the experimentally determined rate law. And the overall reaction for the mechanism must match the overall reaction for the, um, it must match the overall reaction. Uh, and let's see, oh. So for our companion problem, which is the next slide, do complete this as part of your notes. Yes, you do have to complete this companion problem, and I will be checking to see that you've done it. 